The images you have of the 50th state come from Oahu, Waikiki Beach, Diamond Head, Pearl Harbor, surfing on the North Shore, and of course, Hawaii 5 -0. More than a million people live on this island, home to Honolulu, the state's capital. This thriving, high-rise-filled city is probably best known for world-famous Waikiki Beach. The almost entirely man-made beach is a playground for tourists from around the world. In the 1800s, it was a retreat for Hawaiian royalty who surfed on early longboards, surfboards between 9 and 12 feet long. And still today, its calm waters make it an ideal place to learn to surf. Bordered by beautiful historic hotels, Waikiki Beach offers every level of accommodation. From vacation rentals to high-rise hotels with expansive views of the beach, Diamond Head, and the Pacific. Unlike cities and towns on other islands, sidewalks in Honolulu aren't rolled up at sunset. This vibrant city offers plenty of activities after dark. Honolulu is on Oahu's southeast shore, with Pearl Harbor and H&L centered to the west. Getting your rental car at H&L is fairly easy. They're located in the Terminal 2 parking garage. Driving on all the islands is mostly stress-free, but Oahu does have rush hour traffic and perhaps surprisingly, even some short, though spectacular, stretches of interstate. Choosing a place to stay in Honolulu really depends on preferences, mainly rentals versus hotels, and which part of the beach you like most. But that's something you won't know until you get here. Some people love the massive Hilton Hawaiian Village, its beachfront, large lagoon, and Friday night fireworks show on Waikiki's west side. Others prefer the grand old hotels or the twin towers of the Hyatt Regency. For me, it's Airbnb rentals overlooking the zoo and Diamond Head on the east end of Waikiki. I like the beach in this area and the on-street parking that I can often find around the zoo. Parking fees at large hotels are insanely high. Honolulu can easily be seen without a car, but you'll need one to explore the rest of the island. The proximity of your favorite restaurants will help you determine your favorite part of the beach. For me, Lulu's on the corner by the zoo and Tiki's just a block away fit the bill. I love the elevated open air dining, the atmosphere, and the food both offer. And Tiki's often has live music. The Airbnbs I mentioned are just around the corner. It won't take you long to find a favorite area, too. You can find almost any kind of food in this city, and it's guaranteed to be as varied and colorful as your surroundings. There are plenty of dinner and drinking cruises, too. The Star of Honolulu, departing the Aloha Tower Marketplace, offers dinner and a show. This two or three hour cruise parallels Waikiki Beach. Your stay in Hawaii's capital city can be anything you want it to be. Is it a big city or a resort town? It's what you make it. From a packed beach to a spot with room to spread out. From a surfboard to a catamaran. From a room with a high rise view to a place that's a little more down to earth. From dining at Honolulu mainstays like Duke's to grabbing a bite at Burger King. From exploring the city's many parks and public places to browsing high-end shops and ABC stores. If urban settings aren't for you, Honolulu is sure to surprise. And Oahu offers so many options, sites to see, places to stay, and things to do. It's usually the first stop for first-time visitors to Hawaii. But Oahu, the Hawaiian word for gathering place, offers so much more. A short drive to the North Shore brings you to the Dole Plantation, and a stop here for a Dole Whip is a must. The North Shore is home to Haleiwa. It's loaded with old plantation town charm, food trucks galore, 
and a surf shop or two. The 30 mile drive from Honolulu to Haleiwa takes about 45 minutes. To Haleiwa's west is Kayana Point State Park. It's a quick drive that offers a bold change of scenery and hiking trails. To the east of Haleiwa is world famous Waimea Bay. In winter months, thanks to massive waves generated by storms, it hosts the world's top surfing competitions. Waimea Bay is perhaps my favorite place in all of Hawaii. Big rocks, crashing waves, a spectacular beach, a masterclass in surfing, And if your timing works out, lifeguard training day. A chance to see how the ocean is tamed. Just across from Waimea Bay is Waimea Valley, an area of religious and historic significance and a beautiful botanical garden that's home to a huge variety of plants from around the world including the largest collection of Polynesian plants. Make your way a bit less than a mile through the gardens to Waimea Falls. Never miss a chance at a waterfall swim. And for that, this place is special. It's family friendly, life vests are provided and required, and it's lifeguard supervised. The gardens and waterfall are part of a nonprofit organization. There's an admission fee, but once you see the flowers, trees, and falls, and how history and tradition are presented, you'll understand why. East of Waimea Bay is Shark's Cove, a large tidal pool area that's great for snorkeling. And just across the highway is the ultimate food truck village. If it's not there, it's not worth eating. If you're on Oahu between November and February, there's a good chance big waves will be too. And this Shark's Cove area is a great place to spot them. As you continue east along the North Shore, you'll see spectacular beaches, huge waves, and gravity-defying surfers. It's the Hawaii of your dreams. Next up is Turtle Bay Resort, home to a waterfront hotel, vacation rentals, a golf course, and spectacular sunsets. At the beach, just to the west of the hotel, is a marker and display board commemorating an early use of radar, a missed opportunity, and a bit of Pearl Harbor history. Oahu's windward side is jam-packed with must-see sites, too. Heading down the highway from Turtle Bay, first up is the Polynesian Cultural Center, there's a lot to see and do here, but the massive luau was the draw for me. Just 11 miles down the coast is the 4,000-acre Kualoa Ranch, a working cattle ranch and private nature reserve that's been the backdrop for blockbusters, including Jurassic Park and Godzilla. The ranch offers film tours and a variety of activities. It's almost 32 miles from Haleiwa and 24 from Honolulu. Eight miles south of the ranch is the Bioto Inn Temple, this Buddhist temple commemorates the 100th anniversary of the first Japanese immigrants in Hawaii. The temple, a smaller scale replica of its 900-year-old namesake in Japan, is located in the Valley of the Temple's Memorial Park, a large cemetery with faith-based sections. The architecture and surroundings are beautiful. There is an admission charge, but the temple is open to those of all faiths. Just four miles away in the bay is Mokuolo Island also known as Coconut Island, also known as Gilligan's Island. Shots of the island were used in the 60s era sitcom. If the castaways had only known how close they were to Honolulu. Today the island is owned by the University of Hawaii. It's a marine research facility. On the southeastern point of Oahu is Makapu'u Point, home of the lighthouse with the largest lens in the United States. 
Built in 1909 by the Coast Guard, the red cap brick structure stands 46 feet tall with a 420 foot focal height. Its range is 17 nautical miles. To see it up close, you walk the wide, paved Makapu'u Point Lighthouse Trail. Despite the built-in comfort, it can feel steep with an elevation gain of 505 feet. Bring sunscreen and water. This 2.5 mile round trip provides incredible views of Oahu and the ocean. And if you're there in season, it's easy to spot whales. At the end of the trail, an elevated viewing platform provides a look down at the lighthouse as well as expansive views of Makapu'u Beach Park and an island and islet, both bird sanctuaries. There's also a small path that offers a closer look at the lighthouse. Just to the north of the trail is the Makapu'u Lookout. You'll get a better view of the beach park, the bird sanctuaries, and Sea Life Park Hawaii just beyond the beach. As you head back south, you'll pass popular Sandy Beach before reaching the Halona Blowhole and Beach Cove. This beach is also known as Eternity Beach, the site of one of Hollywood's most iconic kissing scenes between Burt Lancaster and Deborah Kerr in the 1953 Oscar-winning movie From Here to Eternity. Just beyond Halona Cove is Hanoma Bay Nature Reserve, a marine life conservation district and one of the most popular tourist attractions on the island. Its coral reef is home to 450 species of fish, octopus, crab, eels, and green sea turtles. Suffering from over-tourism, the bay now limits access. There are admission and parking fees, and new visitors are required to watch an educational film before walking down or riding a tram to the bay. Check out the Bay website to plan your visit. Just over Coco Head Park is Coco Marina. It's a great place for all kinds of water sports. From parasailing on the open ocean, to water skiing in the protected marina. And for me, as you can probably tell, both are highlights of Oahu visits. Before you leave, grab a drink or a bite dockside at the Kona Brewing Company. Next up, three craters that offer spectacular views of the island. First up is nearby Coco Head Crater. The hike up to the 1200 foot summit is via the Coco Crater Trail. It's a steep hike using abandoned railroad tracks that once connected a military station up top to the world below. The view is incredible, but so too is the hike. More than a thousand railroad ties serve as steps. There are a couple of other craters nearby that are a little easier to reach. Bookending Honolulu is Diamond Head, and the seven-tenths of a mile hike up, including 200 steps, is a much easier reach for those of us who are perhaps less active. But it's a popular site, and the 670-foot climb to the summit is considered a moderate hike. When you reach the often crowded top, wait your turn for one of the most spectacular views Oahu has to offer. The third crater, Punchbowl, is a must-see, and it's easier to get to. A drive through a residential neighborhood quickly brings you to the summit of the 272-foot crater, offering a close-up view of the city's skyline. The beautiful park-like setting is by design. Punchbowl is home to the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific. The peace you feel in this extraordinary place will stay with you long after you leave this beautiful island. For many, Pearl Harbor is the reason to visit Hawaii. Their pilgrimage here isn't to a massive naval base, it's to a sacred place. With reverence, they honor the 2,403 who died after the Empire of Japan's surprise attack. 
December 7th, 1941 is a day that has lived in infamy. The Pearl Harbor National Memorial Visitor Center is free and open to the public. The complex features exhibits, a theater, and a research and education center. But the Arizona Memorial, what you really must see, requires a free reservation. There are limited seats each day on the boats that go to the memorial. Plan ahead and secure your tickets as soon as possible. The memorial straddles the hull of the USS Arizona, sagging in the middle, rising on each end, symbolizing the nation's initial defeat and ultimate victory. 1,177 sailors lost their lives on the Arizona. 900 are entombed in the ship. The battleship Missouri Memorial and the Bowfin submarine are available for tours too. They require paid tickets. Just to the west of Pearl Harbor is Alani, the Disney Resort. This leeward side of the island has beautiful beaches and a slower pace. In addition to the places already mentioned, Oahu is loaded with sights to see, including other observation points like the Pali Lookout and the Aloha Tower. Royal sites like the Ayalani Palace and the Queen Emma Summer Palace. Museums like Bishop, home of the world's largest collection of Polynesian cultural artifacts, secluded hikes far from tourist centers that lead to incredible waterfalls, and of course, the headquarters of Hawaii 5 I hope this video helps as you plan your trip to Honolulu and the rest of Oahu. You can see and do so much in just a few days. It truly is a dream destination. To see more travel videos like this, subscribe to my channel, Newsocracy. I'm Jim Albritton. Thanks for watching.